So hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, we are going to solve the question minimize the heights two. This is the problem of the day, and the question is very much interesting. The logic behind solving this question is also very much interesting. So let's keep the target of fifty likes in this video, and without any delay, let's start the video. So first of all, let's try to read down the problem statement. So in the question, you will be given an array denoting heights of n towers and a positive integer k. There will be n towers and There will be positive integer k. So for each tower, you must perform exactly one of the following operations exactly once. So you can increase the height of the tower by k, or you can decrease the height of the tower by k. For each and every value in the array, you can either increase it by k or you can decrease it by k. And each and every operation can be applied only once, either of the two one. So now what you have to do, you have to find out the minimum possible difference between the height of the shortest and tallest tower after you have modified each. tower after applying operation on each tower you have to find out what is the minimum possible difference between the height of the shortest and the largest tower one note has been mentioned over here that it is compulsory to increase or decrease the height by k for each tower you have to compulsory apply the operation and after the operation the resultant array should not contain any of the negative integers okay so after the operation the resultant array should not contain any of the negative integers So now let's try to understand with the help of the uh, test case given over here. So let me just copy this test case and let's try to solve the test case. Okay. So over here the value of k given to you is equivalent to two and n is equivalent to four. And the array elements are one, five, eight, and ten. Now either I can increase the value by two or I can decrease the value by two. So these are the two. Uh, operations from which i can apply i can either apply this or this operation so now what i have to do this is the entire array so first of all before applying the operation let's say to find out the difference between the smallest and the largest element so the smallest is 1 and the largest one is 10 so 1 and 10 on what is the difference so 10 minus 1 will be equivalent to 9 now what i will be doing one by one i will be either applying plus 2 or minus 2 on each and every array element so let's start with the first element What if I apply minus two on one? So it will be a negative value, right? So I cannot apply minus two. I need to do plus two for this one. So it will be equivalent to three, right? So I have done plus two on this one, and I can see the value becomes three. For now, this five, what I will be doing? I will be trying to decrease the value by two. So five minus two will be equivalent to three. Now for this eight, again I will be trying to decrease the value by two. Eight minus two will be equivalent to six. And for this ten, what I can do? I can increase the value or decrease the value. See. the target is to minimize the smallest and largest the difference between the smallest and largest element right now for this 10 if i increase the value by 2 so 10 plus 2 will be equivalent to what it is equivalent to 12 so the largest element over here will be 12 but i don't want this i want to minimize the difference between the smallest and the largest one so instead of applying plus 2 i will be doing minus 2 for 10 so 10 minus 2 will be equivalent to 8 So now over here in this modified array where I have applied each operation at least once. So what is the smallest one? Three, and what is the largest one? It is equivalent to eight. So eight minus three will be equivalent to five, and this is the smallest possible uh, difference between the smallest and the largest element, the minimum difference possible. So if you try out different other combination of doing plus two or minus two, you will not be able to minimize this value. And now what will be the output of this test case? The output of this test case comes out to be five. and you can check the inside the uh, output of the example number 1 the output is also equivalent to 5 right so this is the entire uh, question and this in this manner you have to choose either plus k or minus k for each and every array element and if you uh, do so you will be uh, getting an modified array and you have to find out the difference between the smallest and the largest element so this is how the entire question works i hope you understood everything about the question So now let's try to brainstorm and let's try to understand how to solve this question. What can be the algorithm of solving this question? So now, before starting and before understanding the optimal approach, what I'll be doing, I'll be going through the brute force approach. What can be the brute force approach? So in the brute force approach, you might have already guessed you can apply both the combination. You can try out plus k and minus k for each and every array element. We know how many array elements are going to be there. There are n array elements, right? And for each and every array element, I have two operations. I can do either plus k or minus k. So now, what will be the time complexity if you try out each and every other combination? So the time complexity will be around two to the power n. It will be exponential, right? So the brute force approach. If you have thought of doing the brute force approach, it it will be not feasible. It will not be accepted because it is going to take much amount of time. 
So now we strictly need to uh, be on the safer side and we need a different approach, which will be far better than this exponential approach. So now for this approach, what I need to do? See, first of all, as I mentioned, for each and every element, you have two options available. You can either do plus K or you can do minus K. Right? You can either do plus K or minus K. So there are two different possibilities. So now over here, if you try out each and every possibility, this is not going to work. You need to act little bit smartly so that you can easily solve this question. So let me explain you what can be done. So over here, let's say this is the entire array. And this is the array in which I have already sorted this entire array. Okay, so now let's say after the, uh, sorting the array, this is the entire array. So A is the smallest element and B is the largest element and there are different elements between A and B. So now on the number line, if you try to observe A and B on the number line, so here will be your A and here will be your B and all the other elements will be lying between this range A and B, right? So now if I want to decrease the value, if I want to minimize the difference between A and B, before applying the operation, the difference will be B minus A. Do you guys agree? Before applying the operation plus Q or minus Q on every array element, the difference is going to be B minus A. Now, if I want to minimize this entire uh, difference, what I can do, I can somehow bring the value of this A on the right hand side and I can somehow bring the value of this B on the left hand side. So if I want to bring the value of this B, if I narrow down this entire range to something like this, earlier it was this range. Now if I narrow down this uh, range into this much so if i apply plus k if i apply plus k to this a and if i apply minus k to this b i can narrow down this range do you guys agree so if i do plus k if i do a plus k and if i do b minus k the difference between the largest and the smallest one will be reduced down if you want to check the difference so b minus k minus a plus k what will be the value so that would be b minus k minus a minus k and that comes out to be b minus a minus 2k right so this is the value and obviously earlier what was the value earlier the difference was b minus a and now what is the difference after narrow down the uh, entire range the difference is b minus a and minus 2k i'm subtracting something extra from this uh, the range. So obviously the difference has been reduced down. So now what I'll be doing. So I will be keeping the smallest value. I'll be having two different variables. The smallest one will be what? It will be nothing but it will be B minus A. So basically the smallest value will be what? It will be A plus K. And the largest value, what will be the largest value? So the largest value in this scenario will be B minus K. Right? So for the first element and for the last element, I have made sure that this is the most feasible option which I can do. I can either increase the value of A for the smallest one and I can decrease the value of the largest element by K. So I have got two different values for the first element in the sorted array and for the last element in the, in the sorted array, I have figured out that this is the thing which I can do. I'm not sure whether this is correct thing or wrong thing because it is possible that if I'm going to modify the elements present in this range, if I'm going to modify the other values, then it might appear the smallest might change to something else. The smallest might change to something else and the largest might change to something else. It is possible, right? So now this is the first thing. So the first thing what, I, what we are going to do, the first thing is that we are going to sort the array. So on sorting, I will be getting a range. A to B will be my range. And now after that, I came to know that I have the smallest and the largest element. And what I did for the smallest and the largest element inside the sorted array, I was able to figure out that what will be the smallest value. So the smallest value will be A plus K after applying the operation and the largest value will be what? It will be B minus K after applying the operation for the for A and B. For A and B, I have figured out what I can do. Now, what can be done further? So the further thing is that for the for this two values, I have identified. Okay, so this can be the thing. Okay, so now over here, there will be one answer variable available, right? See, I need a variable that will store my final answer. So what should I initialize this answer variable? Let's try to think for a few minutes. Let's take one example. Let's say all the array elements are one in this case. Okay, and let's say 
this is the entire array the value of n is equivalent to 4 and the k value given to you is equivalent to 3 now on this entire array can you apply minus 3 can you decrease the value of each and every array element by 3 is it possible do you think it is possible obviously not if i apply minus 3 then all the array elements are going to be negative and according to the quotient i cannot have any negative values inside the array fine so what will be my option what i can do so if before applying the operation before applying minus 3 or plus 3 what is the difference between the largest and the smallest one so that difference is answer is equivalent to 1 minus 1 and that answer temporary answer is equivalent to 0 right so now over here what i can do i can simply apply plus 3 on each and every array element i can apply plus 3 on each and every array element so the array will become 4 4 and 4 so now what is the difference between the largest and the smallest one so the difference between the largest and the smallest one is 4 minus 4 is equivalent to 0 i cannot see any change in the answer earlier also before applying the operation it was 0 and after applying the operation also it is equivalent to 0 so there might be some of the test cases in which the answer remains unchanged so what i will be doing whichever answer variable i will be having to store my answer i will have that answer variable initialized to the difference of the largest and the smallest element that will be initialized to difference of the largest and the smallest element okay and over here a is the smallest one and b is the largest one a is the what smaller smallest element and b is what it is the largest element okay so do not confuse yourself so this is a and this is b basically you can do largest minus smallest element it is largest minus smallest so i will initialize my answer variable with what what largest minus smallest and this is the proof that i can initialize it in this manner right so now we have understood okay so these are the things and for two elements i was able to predict after sorting the array i was able to predict for the smallest one and for the largest one that for the smallest one what i can do i can increase the value by k and for the largest one i can decrease the value by k this is the entire prediction for these two elements now what can be done for the rest of the array elements now what can be done for this many elements so now here comes an intuition here comes a very interesting part let me take one more example let's say it is 1 3 5 and 7 okay and now for this array let's say n is equivalent to 4 and k is equivalent to what k is equivalent to let's say uh, 4 okay so now over here for this element for this entire array what i will be doing first of all let's say to initialize the answer variable what can be the answer over here 7 minus 1 will be equivalent to 6 so this is my initialization of the answer right this is the answer that is basically the difference between the smallest and largest before applying any of the operation fine so now for n is equal to 4 and k is equal to 4 so now if i apply the operation for this element can i do plus k basically can i do minus k for the first element can i do 1 minus 4 no i cannot do 1 minus 4 so what can i do i can simply do plus 4 similarly for this 3 can i do minus 4 so 3 minus 4 is equivalent to minus 1 i cannot do minus 4 for this element as well i can simply increase the value but after this point after this point for this 5 can i do plus 4 obviously you can do plus 4 and can i do minus 4 obviously you can apply plus 4 and minus 4 both of them both of them are possible right so now over here in this scenario there is a pivot point there is a pivot point that before the pivot point all the elements can only have plus k operation on it right over here this was the pivot point that before in this range 0 to i all the elements can only handle plus k as an operation it cannot handle minus k as an operation so now over here what i will be doing i will be iterating over the pivot point i will be iterating over the pivot point one by one i will be checking whether let's say if this is my pivot point then what will be my minimum and what will be my maximum element okay so how will i find what will be my minimum and what will be my maximum element so whenever i say this is my location of the pivot point you might you have to understood that all the elements in 0 to i have up, have been applied plus k operation and all the elements from i plus 1 to n minus 1 have been applied what have been applied minus k operation because it is possible that some of the elements cannot handle 
minus k in the range 0 to minus 1 in 0 to i right so this is what i'll be doing that i'll be iterating over each and every element array element from 0 to n minus 2 that is the last element 0 to n minus 1 basically 0 to n minus 2 that is the last element and i'll be finding that what will be my minimum and maximum element in that scenario so how to find the minimum and maximum element so this is the entire sorted error right so every element will be in increasing order in this manner right so this will be this will be the entire building right let me draw it in a, a clear manner so let's say this is the element this is the element this is the element and this is the element and this is the element right so now initially what is the smallest element smallest one is this one this is the smallest one and what is the largest element this is the largest element right now i have to apply the operation and now let's say for this was my pivot point this is my pivot point so in 0 to i what i can do i can only do plus k so the range so the value of the buildings basically the height of the building might have been increased to this and this might have been increased to this much right so now in this scenario it is possible that your smallest and the largest element might have changed so what can be the smallest and the largest element that is what can be your minimum element and what can be your maximum element so initially your smallest is this one smallest is the first element and the largest one is this element right so basically your smallest will be what it will be array of 0 plus k and your largest element will be what array of n minus 1 minus k right as i explained that these are the two predictions which i can do on the first and the largest element smallest and the largest element right so now how to find the minimum and maximum after applying let's say if this is my pivot point there will be changes in the minimum and the maximum element so minimum will be what it will be what it will be minimum of the smallest element and array of i plus 1 minus k so what i did over here see i said that this is my pivot point my i is over here right so all the elements from 0 to i minus 1 i have assumed that i have done plus k to them i have applied plus k operation so all the elements in this range can be done minus k i have applied minus k operation on it on all of them right so now what will be changes in my smallest and the largest element so it is possible if i do plus k over here on each and every array element if i do basically if i do minus k on each and every array element from i plus 1 to n minus 1 so let's say this will be reduced to this much and this will be reduced to this much this will be reduced to this much and this will be reduced to something this much so this much part will be deleted from every array element in the range i plus 1 to n minus 1 if this is the scenario right so this will be the reduction done so now what will be your maximum and minimum value what will be your maximum and minimum value so your maximum in this range what will be your maximum value your maximum value will be the last element it will be array of your maximum value will be array of this element basically your maximum value will be the last element what will be the smallest one so the smallest one will be what it will be array of i plus 1 minus k so I have reduced minus k from the i plus 1th element and in this range, in this part, in this much of part, the smallest element will be error of i plus 1 minus k. I am comparing this value with the smallest which I have predicted, that is this one. Similarly, in the same manner, I have to find out the maximum value. So these are the initial values, right? This is the entire sorted array. Okay. Now, let's say this is your pivot point. And in, in the pivot point, here is your i and all the elements from 0 to i minus 1, what are they applied? They have been applied plus k operation and the all the elements in i plus 1 to n minus 1 have been applied what? I have been applied minus k. So assume that I have applied minus k on all of them. So the value of every array element from i plus 1 to n minus 1 will be this much, right? So these are the new values after applying the operations, right? And over here, after applying plus k operation, the new value will be this much, right? So this is these are the new values. So now I have to find out what can be the maximum value. So I have explained what is this mi, what is the minimum value? That is minimum of smallest and array of i plus one minus k. Now what will be maximum? Maximum. Let me help you to understand what can be the maximum. Now I want the answer from you guys. Try to think what can be the maximum. 
see initially this is my smallest and this is my largest and we know smallest is what it is basically array of 0 plus k and what is the largest one largest is array of n minus 1 minus k as as we explained as i explained that the range will be reduced down i have predicted the uh, plus k or minus k for the smallest and largest element right so now over here i have to find out what can be the maximum if my maximum might have been updated it is possible that your largest element remains this largest element right it is possible that this largest element remains as it is so one of the candidate will be what one of the candidate will be largest variable itself it will be largest variable itself and over here in this range which is the largest element in this range the largest element is this one it is what it is array of i plus k so basically i have reduced minus k from the this element the element standing at the pivot point so maximum will be updated to array of i plus k so maximum of these two values will be your updated maximum value after applying the operation so this will be the updated maximum and minimum at each and every pivot point and now you can update the value of the answer variable to what answer variable will be nothing but answer variable will be minimum of answer and updated maximum minus minimum so this is how we can find the answer but now one one more thing we need to handle see as i mentioned as i'm doing minus k it is possible that the value of this mi this value of array of i plus one minus k might have been reduced down to negative so in order to handle that the value of mi is negative if the value of mi is negative then i will not apply this formula i will simply continue i will not apply this formula because if mi is negative let's say ma was equivalent to 10 and mi is equivalent to minus 9 so 10 minus minus 9 will be 19 it will not be a smaller value and obviously according to the question that thing negative element is not accepted in the operation right so this is the entire uh, algorithm this is the entire thing what we will be doing and now let me try to summarize the entire algorithm i hope you understood it this was a little bit complex the understanding part but let me just quickly write down the entire algorithm okay so this is the entire algorithm so the first step is to sort the entire array so after sorting the array what i need to do i need to find the answer variable so what will be the answer variable as i mentioned for some of the test case you might be applying only plus k operation if you apply plus k on each and every array element the uh, the difference between the largest and smallest before applying the operation and after applying the operation is not going to change so that would be array of n minus 1 minus array of 0 and now i need the smallest and the largest element what will be my smallest element smallest element i have predicted for the zeroth element for the array of zeroth element i know one operation what i can do i can just do plus k right so reducing reducing down the range of the elements so array of zero plus k will be the operation that will be my smallest element and largest element possible is array of n minus one minus k so this is the smallest and largest element now i need to work on the pivot element pivot element so on the pivot element i am assuming that all the elements from 0 to the pivot element basically from 0 till i for all these elements what i will be doing i will be simply increasing their values and for all the elements from i plus 1 to n minus 1 i will be simply reducing down their values re reducing down their values by minus k right so i will be having a for loop that will be starting from i is equal to 0 to i is lesser than n minus 1 i am not iterating till the last element you will come to know why i am not iterating because according to this formula that is now your mi might have been updated the minimum value element and the maximum element might have been updated so minimum will be what minimum will be nothing but minimum of the smallest element which you have predicted and array of i plus 1 minus k and what will be the maximum value so maximum will be maximum of largest element and array of i plus k in this range in 0 to i if i apply plus k on every element what will be the largest element so the largest element will be array of i plus k so i have compared it with the largest which i have predicted 
And in this range in i plus 1 to n minus 1, if I applied minus k on every element, then what will be the smallest element? What will be the smallest element? It will be what? Array of i plus 1 on which I have done minus k. This element will be the smallest one because the entire array is sorted. So this is the reason why you need to sort the entire array. So let me just uh, put this little bit far away from the algorithm. So the algorithm looks prettier. It would be cleaner. Array of i plus k. Fine. And this entire logic is for what? It is for the pivot element. Okay, so let me copy this over here. Now, what I need to do, I need to check if I have done negative element, if I have handled negative element or not. So if mi, that minimum element is lesser than zero, I will not apply the formula. I will just continue from here itself. And if this is not the scenario, answer will be what? Answer will be minimum of the answer which I have already found and the difference between the maximum and minimum value, right? And the fifth step is to simply print or return the answer variable. Fine. So this is the entire algorithm. This is the entire algorithm. And I hope you have understood the entire algorithm. Okay. So what will be time and space complexity of this algorithm? So the time complexity will be sorting. That is order of n log n plus order of n, but I'm ignoring the uh, order of n. So the overall time complexity will be order of n log n. What will be the space complexity? Space complexity comes out to be constant. So this is your time complexity and this is your space complexity. Okay. So try to take one more test case and try to understand how this entire thing is going on. I have shown you different, different test cases that why we need to do this and this step, right? So now let's move and let's try to understand what is the implementation part. So over here I have imp implemented the entire algorithm in Java, but the same can be implemented. Take the reference of the algorithm and you can implement it in whatever language you want. Okay. So here is the first step of the algorithm that is sort the entire array. So answer variable will be what initialized to array of n minus one minus array of zero that is largest minus smallest difference. And now I have two different values that is smallest and largest. I have predicted for the uh, first element, it will be plus k. I'm applying error of zero plus k. And for the largest element, it is possible that the last element remains largest. So I have done minus k on that element. And now these are the local variables mi and ma. That is minimum and maximum based on the pivot element. So now for the pivot element, I have iterated from zero till n minus one. That is till the second last element. Okay. So mi that is minimum current minimum what will be the current minimum it will be nothing but the minimum of the smallest which you have predicted and array of i plus 1 minus k that is i plus 1 to n minus 1 in this in that range what will be the smallest element it will be array of i plus 1 minus k and what will be the maximum element maximum will be the largest which i have predicted and in the range 0 till i the largest one will be array of i plus k so after doing that, I have handled the case in which the negative elements might be possible. So if negative element is possible, then I am just continuing. I will not update the answer variable. And now if it is not the scenario, an answer will be updated to what? Answer will be updated to math.mean, basically minimum of answer and difference between current maximum and current minimum based on your pivot point. And at the end, you have to simply return the answer variable and that's it. So now let's try to submit this entire solution and let's have a look at the acceptance. And we can see that the problem has been successfully submitted. So that was it for in this video. I hope you understood everything about the solution. And this question was kind of trickier, but we need to keep in mind different, different algorithms. We, basically, we need to keep in mind different, different test cases to understand. And I have shown you the example of every test case, why we need to do this and that thing. So that was it for in this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.